Hi there, my name is Victor and I am a master technician. Today I'm going to show you how to complete the rear brake job on 2016 to 2022 Lexus RX 350 and RX 450H models. First you will need to lift the vehicle up and uh, place it securely on jack stands. Never work on a vehicle supported just by a jack because it can collapse and kill you. The lifting points are located on the unibody pinch welds and they're marked by these two semicircular cutouts. So you have a set of them in the front and you have uh, the same ones on the rear right here. So that's where you're going to lift it up from. Since you're not going to have enough space at that marked spot to place both the jack and the jack stand, I'll use the jack on this part of the pinch weld, it's a little bit thinner and that's why I have a steel plate here so that it doesn't crush it and then I'm going to place the jack stand in a designated location so uh, if you need to take the rear wheel off, lift it up there if you're doing the front wheel, lift it up there or if you're doing both, lift up both sides front and rear after supporting the rear of the vehicle securely on jack stands, remove the rear wheels using a 21 millimeter socket. To complete the rear brake job on the Lexus RX 350, uh, you need to completely back off the rear electric parking brake. Otherwise, you will not be able to compress the caliper piston and install new pads. Now, on 2020, 21, and 22 models, you can do it using the EPB uh, button inside the car, and I have a video on how to do that. The earlier models, 2016 to 2019, uh, do not have that feature, so we'll need to do it um, manually by using uh, electrical current supplied to the motor. So on this particular car, we're going to unclip the connector. To do that, we'll need to clean it up first because it's covered in dirt and grime. So I'm going to clean off all the dirt and dust out of it as much as I can with a brush. And we can use a little screwdriver to uh, scrape off any crud that's stuck in there too. If we don't clean it, we won't be able to uh, press this tab right here to disengage it. So what I'll usually do is I'll use compressed air. So if you have a compressor, use compressed air and just blow it into this hole and all around here to clean dust from under this tab. Uh, I'm not in the shop right now, so I'll just use like a can of... Uh, computer duster and uh, we'll see what we can get done here. All right, hopefully that's sufficient. Now take the connector off. I'll use a flat blade screwdriver or a trim tool, press it down here and then now you can wiggle it off there you go so now the connector is off to release the parking brake we'll need to supply power to the two little terminals inside there so there are two electrical uh, terminals so let's hook up some power to it to do this you just need a couple uh, pieces of wire and a battery you can also use just a little nine volt battery that's used in like toys and remote controls but it takes quite a bit longer. Uh, it winds the motor back really slowly. So I'm just using a spare 12 volt battery I have sitting here. So connect the black terminal to the pin that's towards the front of the car and the positive red terminal to the pin towards the rear of the car. And now I'm going to uh, connect it to the battery and uh, back the motor up all the way.
there you go. Once it stops backing up, you can uh, disconnect your terminals. And uh, now you're ready to do the rear brake job. So the process I showed you earlier was on the driver's side or left side of the vehicle. Now we're gonna go to the passenger side and uh, it's exactly the same thing, except you have to reverse the way the wires are located. So you're gonna have the positive or red wire towards the front of the vehicle. And then you're going to have the negative black wire towards the rear of the vehicle. And then you're gonna go connect and uh, watch the motor wind back. So now that it's stopped, we're done backing up the passenger side or right side uh, electric parking brake and uh, we can proceed with finishing a brake job on this side. You'll need to take off the rear caliper itself. So first you can crack these uh, 14 millimeter bolts loose. And then uh, as you can see, the pin starts spinning. So, uh, Let's crack them. So uh, because the pin is spinning, you wanna hold it. So it has a flange on it for a 17 millimeter wrench. Now hold the pin. And then take the bolt out. And then do the same here. Hold it with a 17 millimeter wrench. All right, so now you'll be able to lift the caliper off. Wiggle, a little, wiggle it off and then you can uh, take it and set it out of the way and you can just rest it right there like so. Next thing we need to do is to loosen these two bolts right here that hold the caliper bracket on. So they have 19 millimeter heads on them. wire out of the way so we can see all right so now that the bolts are off we can slide the caliper bracket off and there it is next we're going to take the brake rotor off it's stuck on there so there's a couple of ways of doing it there are a couple holes uh, drilled and threaded into it from factory so the thread on them is a m8 but by 1.25 so you can get a bolt like this at a hardware store I usually like to put some anti-seize or some sort of lubricant on it just to make it easier to uh, thread into these holes because they're full of rust and crud. The other way to do it is if you don't have a bolt or you can get your hands on one, it's just beat on the rotor from this side with a hammer and it will eventually come off. It's not my preferred method because it can put a big divot in the rotor that you'll have to you know, if you're throwing the rotor out, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to be machining these on a lathe, so I want to preserve them. You see, with a little bolt like that, it's quite easy. So now the rotor can come off. All right, so now we're going to service the rear brake calipers. So you can slide the pads out of them. Sometimes they're stuck, especially this inside one. So you can uh, use something to sort of tap it out of there. There we go. So we got it out. Now we're going to clean up the sliders. They're full of rust and crust. So we want to make sure that uh, the pad slides in there easily once we reinstall it. 
a lot of times you'll see guys pounding the pads in with a hammer because they don't want to fit in and uh, that's just not the right way to do it so get everything cleaned up as much as you can with a brush and then you can scrape the corners out with a small flat blade screwdriver whatever gunk remains in there can come out and let's do this side as well if you don't do a good job then the pad's not going to slide in there and uh, when you press the brakes it's going to go in because the force acting on is quite large but when you release the brakes the pad will not retract away from the rotor and uh, it's gonna wear very quickly so now uh, we're gonna pop these sliders out and you can do that by getting a screwdriver in here and then in here and get it out just do one side at a time that way you don't get confused about which way they're supposed to fit in so you can see that on the back here, there's still a lot of rust and that's what's causing the pads very often to uh, not fit in properly, even if you clean this side of the sliders out. So take your wire brush and just uh, clean that really well. If you have a, like a powered wire wheel or angle grinder attachment, that's very handy to use too. If you don't, you can use the small screwdriver and uh, scrape everything out of there as best as you can and continue doing it until the pads can fit into it nicely. So I try to get it done properly on the first go because otherwise you end up assembling everything only to find out that the pad is, you know, not sliding in and has to be forced in. And then you have to take it all apart and clean it again. Get in the corners especially because that's where a lot of the rust buildup is. So normally I'd use a, a power tool to do this, but I'm here uh, showing how to do it if you don't have one. You still end up having to scrape the corners out because uh, Usually your grinder can get in there. And don't use a grinder attachment that's gonna actually eat away at the metal. Just use one with like a brush on it or some sort of a cleaning wheel. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then uh, if there is gunk on the back of these, you can clean that off too. Just make sure that uh, there's nothing that's gonna make this uh, slider stick away from the caliper bracket and make the pad not slide in there easily. All right, that's pretty good. So now you can look at the other side for reference and uh, that will sort of tell you which way these need to be reinstalled. So just uh, copy the other side and they just pop right in there like that. Make sure it goes in all the way to give space for the pad. Okay, so this slider is in. So now we'll do the same cleaning procedure with the other side and then we'll carry on. Once you're done cleaning both sides, you can now uh, test the pad and see if it fits through. It's good to do this before you go and reassemble everything on the car. So you can uh, put it in there and see this one still, it's really tight in there. Um, so in essence, what we're gonna do is take it apart and clean it some more until this pad goes in there with a minimum amount of effort. Like that's not gonna work properly. And that's where you see a lot of guys, they just say F it. And they, uh, see this one slides in a little bit better, but uh, don't just leave it if it doesn't fit properly, because then uh, 
it's not gonna retract. So I'm gonna take this apart and just scrape and wire brush a little bit more behind there. And uh, let's see what happens then. Okay, so after a bunch more uh, cleaning and scraping, we got to a point where the pad fits through nice and easy without any effort. Well, a uh, light amount of effort, obviously. I mean, it's metal on metal. And then uh, on the other side, so it goes through. You don't have to use a hammer to pound it in or anything. It's happy, happy. So now we can proceed. Let's uh, take out these slider pins. So grab the pin, grab the boot and take the slider out. Wipe it off and inspect it. Oftentimes there will be a lot of rust build up in here. So you can, uh, if you don't have power tools, you can scrape it out with a, with a little flat blade screwdriver, or you can use a wire brush or a powered wire brush. This one looks great. So we're gonna put some of the um, slider pin lubricant on it. So this is what Toyota wants you to use is a, is a lithium sole based rubber grease. Uh, and they sell this at the dealership. Make sure to never ever use a petroleum based product like a wheel bearing grease or axle grease or U-joint grease because it will destroy the boots. It's gonna make them swell up and then uh, the pin can get stuck in there or the grease will leak out. And also on this pin right here, we have a little piece of rubber as well. And that's why I pull the pins out one at a time too. So you don't confuse which one's which. This one doesn't have a rubber bushing, this one does. So if you use petroleum grease, this bushing will swell up and it will act like a piston, uh, piston ring inside there and it won't let the pin move around. So that's gonna be a problem. Some people use a silicone grease, which seems to work okay, but uh, if you can get the proper stuff, that's way better. So put a dab on there. Let's get it in here. Make sure the boot is on all the way. You don't want to have a gap there. And then uh, sometimes there'll be air trapped inside. So we'll keep pushing the pin out. You can take the screwdriver, lift up the lip a little bit and uh, let any air that's trapped in there escape. So let's do it with this one as well. There we go. The pressure is released. And then lastly, we can use uh, some along these lines or anti-seize brake protection paste and then apply some into the sliders. So that's gonna prevent the pads from getting stuck in there and help them uh, slide a little bit smoother. Okay, now this uh, caliper is ready for reassembly back to the vehicle. Now we can get these uh, pads ready. So set up the old ones the way they came out of the vehicle. So we had the inside here, the outside here, uh, these pads here, the new ones. So clean up these uh, shims a little bit and inspect them. If they're rusty and falling apart, they should be replaced. You can use a little screwdriver to lift them up. So as you can see, this one looks to be in actually really good shape. It's not corroded, it's not rusty or flaking. So let's take a look at this one too here. This one looks great as well. So you could reuse these uh, on this vehicle I am going to. So then we'll use some of this uh, brake caliper grease here and we'll put it on the back of the pads. That's gonna help uh, with any brake squeal noise because it absorbs uh, pad vibrations. And then you put your uh, shim on here and clip it in. Uh, don't be putting grease on the back of the pad. I see some people do it. All it does is just create a lot of mess. It doesn't actually help with anything, so. And uh, if these shims come apart, you can put the uh, grease in between them too. These ones are stuck together pretty well. And then uh, take these uh, brake pad uh, wear squeal indicators, or squealers as they're called, and, uh, and just pop it off like that. There's a little tab on the inside of it right there. And that's what engages with the little cutout right here. 
and then uh, install it properly. So you'll often see guys install them upside down and it goes like this and it clicks. If it doesn't click, you can push it in, uh, push that little pin in with your screwdriver until it falls into the slot. Okay, so we're done there. And then get this, this squealer off and install it on here. Click, it's in place. All right, now we can go uh, and start reassembling things. Use a wire brush to clean the hub really well. You don't want any rust or dirt left on it because it can uh, make the rotor not sit flush against the hub and cause a vibration. Next, we're going to compress the caliper piston. Uh, and that's the whole reason we backed off this uh, electric parking brake motor is to enable us to compress this back. Otherwise the new brake pads won't fit. So there are a couple ways of doing this. You can use like a big uh, channel lock type of pliers and uh, grab it here and here and squeeze. And then the caliper will go back in or you can use a brake caliper depressor tool. So it looks like that. Get it between the caliper and the, and the caliper bracket and the piston. pistons pushed all the way back so you see now that the rubber boot here is kind of sticking out all over the place so we want to pop it back in otherwise when you're inserting the pad in it can roll this rubber over and then uh, it's gonna get a hole in it when the piston presses against the back of the pad and you can use a small flat blade screwdriver and uh, just go around gently what happens is it gets air trapped inside and then that air pushes the rubber boot out. And also with this, uh, with this setup, when the caliper was retracting, sometimes it will make this thing not very happy. So get the air out of there. Make sure you don't use something very sharp so you don't rip a hole in the boot. So we want to get it so that uh, the boot is all the way back down. So we're almost there. All right, so pretty much some like this where the boot is not sticking out above the piston. That way when the pad slides in, it's not going to roll the boot over. Yeah, we'll manipulate it some more. And now uh, it's looking really nice. It's all properly installed. So just uh, manipulate it gently with a small flat blade screwdriver until it's uh, in a good position like this. Let's get the new brake rotor back on. Uh, I didn't buy new ones. I machined mine on a lathe because they still had lots of thickness left uh, below minimum spec. And then make sure that uh, these little holes uh, or the imprints of the two holes right here and right here go back in the same position. That way if there's any raised area there or any rust or corrosion, it's not gonna push against the rotor. So just try to always get back, everything back in the same place that it came out. And then you can put a lug nut on to hold the rotor in place while you're putting the caliper bracket on. 
Now go ahead and install the brake caliper bracket with the two bolts. and uh, tighten to 111 foot-pounds or really nice and tight now we can get the pads in you can see the outline of the caliper bracket on this one this one has the outline of the piston on it and now we can reinstall the caliper so from factory these bolts have like a red loctite on them um the manual doesn't tell to put loctite on them i think it's really overkill personally none of the other lexus brakes or even the front brakes on this same vehicle require loctite so i just put them back on with without putting fresh loctite on it but if you feel uncomfortable doing that then by all means put some uh, loctite on them it won't hurt anything now you can hold the pin with a 17 mil wrench and tighten these bolts to 25 foot pounds. And then what I do here is I'll take a small flat blade screwdriver and just pull up on the slip a little bit to release any air pressure built up in there. And there we go. As I was assembling the other side of the brakes, uh, I realized that I was a dummy and I actually installed uh, two outside pads uh, on, the, on the previous side I was working on. So I'm going to make a little video uh to clarify where uh where the pads go because they have uh, different marks on them the inside one and outside one and they're slightly different in design pay attention to the orientation of the pads so the pad that's on the inside the one with the piston has one white mark and then the one on the outside has two white marks and you can see the new ones are like that they're slightly different so the one mark goes on the inside and the piston pushes on the back of this and then the one with the two marks goes on the outside where the caliper bracket goes. Let's say on the front pads, these are the same. So if you orient the pads in the wrong direction, the only thing will change is where this wheeler points. But in this particular case, do make sure you put the proper one to the outside. Now you can go ahead and uh, reconnect the electric parking brake connector. And just... Uh, Push it in until it clicks. There we go. That's done. Now you can remove the lug nut and reinstall the wheel back on there. Using an impact gun, just set it on low power so that uh, it doesn't over torque the lug nuts. Tighten them in a crisscross direction. After completing the brake job, uh, pump the brake pedal a few times. 
to take up any slack uh, that happens after compressing the pads all the way back. And then uh, you can go ahead and start the vehicle. And now uh, you want to uh, wind the electric parking brake all the way in. So release it and then apply it again. You'll see the button is blinking and that's it. Now it's applied. You can release it again. It releases. Applied, it applies. There you go. After you complete the brake job, check the brake fluid level. So in our case, it's right at full mark, at max. Uh, if the brake fluid has been topped up in between, when you compress the pads, it will push some of the fluid out and it can potentially overflow. So uh, in that case, you can use a little syringe and suck some of it out of the tank until it's at max mark and uh, just wash off any uh, brake fluid that spills over because it's not good for your paint. You clean it off with regular water. It's uh, water soluble in essence. And then uh, we can lower the vehicle down. After you take the car off the jack stands, go ahead and uh, torque the wheels to 76 foot pounds. And that is it. Brake job is completed. Thanks for watching. Please check for product links below the video for any tools or supplies needed to complete the procedure shown in this tutorial. If you would like me to make a specific video, please leave a suggestion in comments. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Cheers.